Hello everybody. I thought what we'd do is have a quick look at the, the last split screen and uh, this new BCS system. I actually recorded a, a shrink rip last night and was full of enthusiasm and excitement and all that sort of good stuff. And I realized that although I'd read the rules uh, several months ago, I probably misrepresented uh, several things in the game and probably focused in on some things that were probably not relevant. So I'm going to ditch that video and uh, we'll just leave it as is and we'll re-record this and do this properly and just focus on the game and then uh, I may do a second video once I start playing the game uh, to make some comments on the uh, the the system rules and the special rules for the game and the history that's trying to be conveyed because I think I have a better feel for it now and so this one this video is just going to focus on components and what's in the box that type of thing and we'll kind of, kind of go at it from there and and we'll have a more informed commentary at uh, some point in the near future so we have uh, Last Blitz Krieg uh, module rules and first glance is, well, gee, it's really thick, but in actual fact, that's all scenarios, right? So there's no only two or three pages of rules that refer to some very specific things. Uh, bridges, choice supply sources, uh, how replacements are handled, how the west wall is used, uh, some you know, specifics to a uh, concept of buddies, uh, that are uh, f related formations and how they work together. Uh, recon units, uh, some terrain stuff. And then uh, there's some special rules for each side, how uh, surprise is handled, how the, uh, the tigers are handled. There's obviously issues with tigers from a reliability perspective. So they've, they've worked out a fairly nifty way on how to, how to factor that into the game without uh, creating a lot of extra rules. And then uh, there's some allied special rules and things like that. Uh, victory conditions are pretty interesting in that it takes, uh, uh, in the designer notes, it talks about taking a riff on uh, the heroes, uh, the heights of courage system. So you've got VPs for uh, terrain captured, but then also VPs for losses uh, against uh, specific formations. And so you're going to have to have a certain, you know, keep a certain number of uh, units alive or viable in a formation. Otherwise, you're going to start losing victory points. So you've got to attack but uh, and acquire terrain and the other side has got to do damage to you. So I think that's pretty much how that works. I'm just checking that there real quick. Yeah, that's pretty much how it works. All right, so there is, there's that, and there's a sudden death victory conditions as well. Long designer notes that uh, talk about their, their thinking on weather, bridges, uh, the Graf teams, uh, the you know, German air, which I think is, you know, everybody knows what the situation is with that. And then uh, some of the shoulder rules and, and edges of map rules and why they did things a certain way. Uh, I think it, and then there's a, a long section uh, on uh, why certain units are where they're supposed to be or, or how, why are units in certain locations. What, uh, what were the justifications and rational, rationales for fuel dumps and for the, uh, the bridging, the way bridging is handled and things like that, right? So lots and lots of uh, commentary on that. And then a very, very extensive two, three, four, five, I think eight pages on, no, 10 pages on uh, the map, the units, the formations, the armor, the orders of battle, and all that sort of good stuff. Okay, so lots of goodness in here. Very, very extensive write-up. And Dean Essig, this is uh, his grail game for the bulge. So if that tells you anything, it's his representation of what he thinks the bulge should be, could be, and what, and what he wanted when he very first played the Avalon Hill game, the bulge. Crib notes for you so that uh, you've got some summary uh, rules there, so you're hopefully you're not diving back into this. And as I mentioned in the first video, and I'll, I'll just highlight it here, I love this little icon 
uh, the military symbol with the BCS logo inside with a battalion formation, right? So it looks pretty freaking awesome right there. I love that. I don't like the uh, eight different fonts that are on the cover. Uh, I guess that's just uh, uh, design gone crazy a little, but that's okay. Everything from, you know, Dean Essex uh, uh, title here to the multi-man format and all this, right? It's lots of stuff. Great artwork uh, in, in terms of this though, right? I love the, the pictures and all that. Charts and tables, uh, very simplified game. Uh, you've got an engagement table, you've got your combat table right here, that's it. Not one of your typical TCS, OCS, uh, odds from minus uh, for negative four to one to plus 15 to one across 10 different types of terrain. It's all here, all your DRMs and stuff, unit capabilities, the snafu table. Let me hold this up for you so you can see here. The snafu table. Uh, and I'll show there's another one, there's two of these in the game. So there's your engagement table, your uh, combat modifiers, and the combat results table. And uh, the snafu table is going to impact your ability to execute against the objectives that you set for your formations. This is a formation-based game, formation activation game. It's a, it's a I go, you go uh, activation system. And the snafu table is going to impact your ability to have 100% control over what you do and how effective your decision making is. Uh, let's have a look at the maps up front. The last, the last time I showed them last, but I think let's get a, get a good look at them now. Uh, I saw a photograph of these all put together and interestingly, I, you know, I thought, oh, wow, that looks really impressive. And when you get them out individually, I don't think they're quite as striking. I'm trying to work out. Uh, you know, I have really have trouble with uh, spilling water lately. And I just spilled water on a photograph. So let me just move that. I don't know why that bottle of water is even on the table with the lid off, no less. So, here we go. I'm not gonna put them all together for you because uh, it's real awkward. But here's the the west wall sections, and I've probably got these around the wrong way. In fact, I do I? Yeah, I do. This probably goes up the other end. But there's the two maps there for that side of the side of the map. And there's a fourth map. So here's. Uh, <coughs> oh, you probably can't see with the light. Clavo, Baston is here. West Wall, and then this map is covering Melmady, so this is actually going to be up here. It's going to go like this, something like that. It's pretty striking as it's laid out. Individually, the map, you kind of look at the maps and go, yeah, okay, yeah, no big deal. Uh, but when you put it all together, the the you get this great visual representation of the of the of the maps. Excuse me, that's a loud noise. Uh, of the terrain and all that sort of good stuff. So it's very, very cool. I uh, really like it. There's a fourth map in here somewhere, which I'm not gonna lay out, but it's basically got all the terrain and stuff on it. Now, uh, counters, series rule book, counter artwork. I like these information counters like this. It's pretty efficient use of, uh, of data on a chart. Uh, Artillery is built into the game and built into the formations. And so you're just, a you're just applying, there's water dripping from somewhere. How fascinating. Oh, it's from the spilt water, okay. Um, <laughs> info counters. Artillery is built into the different formations and then you're gonna apply uh, apply uh, artillery chits to combats, uh, both offensively and defensively, more than likely. You've got coordination chits here where the units are fresh. Uh, temporary support provided and on the back there's other bits of information, prepared defenses, more of the same. So two information counter sections. Uh, the German units, I did uh, spend quite a bit of time going through the different uh, capabilities of the units and what the different colors meant. I'm not going to do that this time. You can uh, download the rules online and you can read about that yourself if you're interested and if you're not it'll just be tedious so let's not worry about it. Uh, some blown bridge markers. 
You uh, have this concept of being stopped depending on the type of terrain you move into or what occurs during a, uh, an exercise, uh, an activation. You've got your Americans and your Germans and your British. You know, there's some Belgians flo floating around here somewhere as well. And then more Americans with all their forces and more support counters and more uh, Americans. Lots and lots of divisions, all at the battalion scale. Uh, I think, I think that's the whole shooting match. Great package, really well put together. One thing I, one thing I will say about the game and the rules now that I got through the, uh, the unboxing without destroying anything too much, uh, there's a lot of concepts in here for command and supply that really reflect uh, Dean Essex, uh, I guess, experience and maturity. And you can see the evolution from OCS and TCS and the Civil War Brigade series and all those types of things where there's this, you know, orders oriented form. Uh, orders oriented rule systems and or and or heavy logistical systems and you can see how he's refined and tuned those mechanics and those rule structures to be cleaner and simpler and way more i think elegant i haven't played the game yet so i can't really comment but based on what i'm reading and what i'm seeing from the counter mix and uh the, the, the game overall, I think everyone's going to be pretty happy with the, uh, with the outcome here. Now, it reminds me a lot of uh, Richard Berg's evolution with the Great Battles of History systems. You know, he, he took that kind of heavy, wordy, weighty, uh, not so clear uh, system and refined it and tuned it and hacked at it and carved it down and made it lean and the end result is the men of iron gaming system which is really a you know a, the progeny of the great battles of history and you can see that in in uh, berg's design there you can see the leanness come out uh, particularly with hoplite for instance it's a lot leaner it's a lot more clean a, a system than say spqr or uh, or great or uh, alexander the great different periods for sure but nevertheless the the thought that's gone into the rules and and the the sparsity of the wording is is a lot a lot more readily apparent in say infidel than in great battles of history and the same goes for this when you look at ocs and tcs and uh you know the napoleonics and civil war systems you, you can see where dean essick is heading with at least I can anyway, with, with the, 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 the refinement and simplicity and clarity of his rules there, it's fantastic. How it plays, that's a whole nother story. How uh, much on the rails history is here versus you know, fluidity and uh, opportunities to explore. What if that remains to be seen, I don't know. And uh, looking forward to finding out. Uh, hopefully I'll be playing with one of the former playtesters of this uh, system on Vassal very soon, in the next couple of weeks, in fact. And uh, I may actually try and get some other stuff going on Vassal as well. I can't set up right now because uh, my house is still in a state of flux from the prior, uh, well, prior issues with flooring. So I, I can't set anything long term up that's large. All right. Talk to you guys later. Give you a quick look at the game. You got it. There it is. The last books, the last books Krieg by uh, Dean Ezik. and uh, <clears throat> there it is. Talk to you soon.